Hi guys, welcome to Joe's Camera. In today's episode, we once again have taken an old DVD, Untouched, of the years around 2006. We made the DVD specifically around the Wild Trout Association's management of about 350 kilometers of streams around the village of Rhodes. Make sure you press that like button if you like us, make comments below if you want to, subscribe and share the video if you do like it. The Wild Trout Association has members who own the access to the water and through which access can be gained to over 350 kilometers of running water and more than 150 hectares of still water and which can be found in, from the districts of Barclay East, around Rhodes, McClear, far, as far afield as Dordrecht. The major advantage that we have in this region is the altitude and the remoteness which is, detracts from the utilization of the asset in some people's view, but in other folks' views, it's a major asset because it's not inundated with thousands of fishermen and beets can be fished for an entire day without seeing another human being. We are on the upper uh, to middle box braid. Lovely day, a little bit of sunshine, a uh, bit of cloud around, maybe a little bit too much wind. Uh, under the canopy, we're expecting to see a, a couple of beetles dropping into the water, uh, maybe some sawfly larvae that are known to feed on, on these crack willows above us. Uh, we're going to move up this little stretch up the top here, follow, follow the, the pool up, fish it slowly up to the top and work out the prime line looking for a bit of a bubble line, maybe uh, a, a leaf line, something to show where the trout will be feeding, where the food line will be will be and be uh, uh, where the trout will be sitting in the food line and waiting for something to come by and, and uh, um, to be picked off. Um, we will then follow further up and, and look for some deeper water uh, and uh, see if we can produce a fish 14 to 16 inches. We're approaching this pool from the bottom. Put a nice couple of drifts in the bottom and then work our way up just to see if something's lying down the bottom. Using a little nymph, tandem rig, like I explained, a little sawfly lava behind, and a nice drag free drift. Just following the rod tip with the line so as not to get drag. A little bit of wind, so the presentation is not going to be perfect. Soft pickup. A nice and smooth presentation. And again, just let it drift and work way up the pool towards the bubble line where the fish would lie. Following my, my line again with my rod tip to the right. I don't want to mend in this situation and just always ready for a strike. Very slow moving water, but the fish would and do come and look for a little plop and come and see what it is. Nothing there. Let's move our way up. A little bit closer. Nice and soft presentation and wait for it. Very slow water, so just let it drift there. Normally fishing upstream you want a bit of a drift to disguise the fly. The stronger the, the flow, the less time the trout has to identify the, 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 the fly um, or your imitation. And as long as the profile and the color is right, it will come up and, and eat the the imitation. Right in at the undercut there and just see. Quite a nice deep pool. A little bit murky. Nothing happening at the back here. Let's move up to the top and then look for the bubble line. Right in the bubble line that's hugging the undercut. Slow moving water still. Just 
always ready to because I'm using a sawfly lava and fishing upstream um, lava normally don't swim so your, your drift is absolutely drag free has to be drag free and no movement on your fly sometimes slow but very productive at times try and get a bit further up right. that should produce a fish Fish normally in the box spread average 10 to 12 inches, but a couple of good fish have come out this year around the 14 16 inches, and at times fish up to 5 pounds are caught. Let's give it another cross right up to the top there. That will mend to prevent drag further along the drift. Keep in touch with my line so that there's no, not too much slack when I want to pick up and set the hook. You'll see that I limit the false cast so as not to spook the fish with a lot of line over the water. Two more, right up to the top there. Okay, let's give it another shot. Try a little bit to the left in the current. It's actually strange because the fish normally take quite readably here. I think it's to do with the colour of the water. Not much mending is needed if you if you do a correct cast. So if you allow and you position yourself right, I try and stay out the water, keep out the water to avoid uh, sound waves moving up to the fish and spooking it. There is a little fish, very small little trout, but feisty nevertheless. I'm using a three weight rod and uh, if I've extip it and you'll see that the little fish took the bead and to wet my hand before I grab hold of it. Quick release. But we're still here on the uh, upper to middle box spread. And a nice deep pool running in at a very strange angle. Um, just followed up from the bottom here, caught a little fish, and I'm moving up to the prime lie, which would be in that rounded area there where the flow sort of circles around, and then I'll move up to the top. I'll be casting over my left shoulder with a little bit of a nymph, and soon also put a little bit of weight on just to get my fly down. I have a beaded nymph on and I've set up my strike indicator to get my fly down to the position where the fish would be. A little bit slower but uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, around that curve where the water swirls around, very difficult cast with the wind and I should get a fish around about there. Little, little rainbow is running into the little waterfall there trying to get away but uh, not much of a fight on 
Si vậy. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put my my fly in the current and then do a big bend downstream to prevent drag. The current's coming at a, at a very uh, square angle and I want my nymph to follow the current line down. So if I'm going to cast a uh, fly straight across I'm going to get immediate drag. So I'll cast across and then mend downstream as you can see there. Just moved up a little bit uh, one pool up and there's a very nice dark green pool maybe a little bit murky let's see if we can hook a nice big fish water is a little bit slow and the drift is difficult so patience is needed and presentation on the right spot is very important so we'll give it a couple of drifts and see if we can come up with something nice So you saw fly for this. Go 
when uh, Will be the last pool of the morning. It's a uh, it's a very small, tight pool that hugs the bank past the tree. Um, we we've spent two hours in the water, and we're going to just see if a couple of fish. I'm, I'm sure there will be a couple of fish come up. Watch the strike strike indicator. You'll see the strike indicator move. I probably won't uh, connect to every fish, but uh, have a look how many times it takes to fly, and then we will move off and go and do something else for the afternoon. This is a very, very small little, uh, this year's little uh, fingerling, and I'm going to put him back. Very opportunistic, taking a small size 16 bead, very small. Okay. But it's late afternoon, we're on the stack spread, it's been quite low, the, the stack spread and you can see the water is quite murky and it's a thunderstorm further up, not really helping the water, there's a bit of a caddis hatch on the water, small and a couple of mayflies coming off, but the water may be too murky for a rise. I'm going to try this little run off here in the current uh, with a nymph and see if we can uh, rise a, a fish. The stag spread is one of the major tributaries of the Cry River and normally produces good fish up to six, seven, eight pounds uh, uh, from time to time. Average fish still 10 to 15 inches, uh, but at this stage, as murky as it is now, could be a bit of a problem. But let's give it a try with the nymph. Fred Steinberg arrived in Rhodes as a callow youth when his father purchased the Rhodes Hotel in 1980. Prior to the family's arrival in Rhodes, Fred had a solid grounding in saltwater fishing on numerous trips with his father. With the Bell River on his doorstep, stalking wild rainbow trout became second nature. This enthusiasm has taken him on several trips to the land of the Long Cloud, and South Island's monsters were often surprised. More recently, guiding clients at a variety of venues in the waters of the Indian Ocean, but which has not detracted from his love for freshwater fly fishing and guiding clients on the rivers and streams of the Rhodes region. Although the scenery is stunning and a worthy distraction, one must also bear in mind that wild trout are found in wild areas. 
Keeping an eye out for these animals is essential and one should never forget that you are in Africa. There are no manicured pathways along the riverbanks where the flowers in summer are a feast for the eye. Although the season for trout extends from September to May, one of the most scenic times of the year is from March into April, where fantastic contrasts typify the essence of autumn in the region. Grass green felt as a backdrop to groves of poplars and occasional willow trees that are dunning their autumn dress of glowing yellows and shades of red is a veritable feast for the eye. Fallen leaves turn the ground under the trees into carpets of gold, almost too good to be disturbed by mere human feet. Even the most avid anglers could easily be persuaded to swap their rod for a camera under these circumstances, but autumn also signifies the approach of winter. Moving lower down, the Lilliputian streams of the plateau tumble and fall into deeper valleys where waterfalls and deep pools have been carved into the basaltic bedrock. On this outing, Dave hosted Joe and his crew on a circular route from Rhodes to the prime still water known as Loch Ness near the Tiffendel Ski Resort. This fine fishing venue is fed by a small stream that provides gravel beds suitable for spawning. Although regularly stocked with hatchery reared rainbows, the chances are good that wild trout can be taken at Loch Ness. The nearby ski resort is a favorite winter venue for snow skiing enthusiasts, but more of that later and on with a journey to Balloch. This beat is an absolute gem. Located in a massive basalt basin which surmounts the underlying sandstone, millennia of erosion has created the most spectacular formations in the sandstone. Cradled in the midst of this scenic splendor is a section of the Balloch stream that is home to elusive brown trout only. Elsewhere in the area where browns were stocked together with wild rainbow trout, they have not been able to survive the competition.
The village of Rhodes is located at the southernmost portion of the Drakensberg and is almost at the end of the Maluti route, extending from Lady Grey to Barclay East and then Rhodes and then down to McClear and Solo in the Trans Sky. The village was established in 1891 and was named after Cecil John Rhodes. The uh, village fathers in their wisdom thought that he might bless them with his beneficence and the rural legend has it that he um, contributed a wagon load of pine trees and 500 pounds, but which is a debatable issue. Rhodes has a variety of accommodation available, ranging from catered accommodation to self-catering, and which can accommodate in the region of about 350 people. And uh, Rhodes is also at the center of the, or the geographical center of the best fishing, and arguably the best fishing in, on the continent, uh, but especially in South Africa. Apart from fly fishing, there are a number of other attractions which draw people to Rhodes. Amongst other things, rock art abounds, horse riding, birding opportunities, and in particular, folk come to these parts to see um, bearded vultures, for example, orange-breasted rock jumpers, which only occur about 7,000 feet above sea level. Even the entomology of the area fascinates people, and there's a particular species of hoverfly which has been identified up near Nordia's Neck, and which is the only place in the entire world where this particular, this particular insect has been found. Apart from all the outdoor activities in Rhodes, the character of the village is a major attraction, where the village is a relic of the past, almost frozen in time. Buildings constructed of materials and, that were available at that time and which were limited by the ox wagon and transport. For example, the lengths of corrugated iron. Um, nowadays, that one can buy sheets that are meters and meters long. Now, in those days, they were limited by the lengths of the ox wagons. So the village has retained its character and it has been, it was declared as a national monument in 1997 in order to protect the very character of the village and the, the, the attraction. And so the houses and um, cottages in the village have been lovingly restored by the new owners as roads went through a, a major slump and which had a brief revival during the years of the wool boom, for example. And in more recent times has become a haven for folk from the bright lights who uh, enjoy the peace and quiet and tranquility of the village. And in particular, the buildings may not be altered on the exterior, so retaining the character of the, of the village in its entirety. Fly fishing in the Northeastern Cape has created an attraction which has drawn many, many people to this region. And in particular, has been instrumental in establishing local economic development where 20 years ago there were a few hotels in the towns in the region. Now there are still hotels in the towns, but there are also any number of guest houses and guest farms where visiting fly fishers can be accommodated right on the doorstep of where the water is. The fly fishing opportunities in the Rhodes region are immense. Within an hour's drive of the village, we have access to over 200 kilometers of running water and uh, which can be arranged through the Wild Trout Association and which has its administrative center is based in Rhodes as well. The fly fishing in these parts ranges from minuscule uh, streams way up in the plateau, two and a half thousand meters above sea level, right down to uh, the Cry River, which is the main uh, drain out of the area. What do you recommend, Tony? Yeah. Mm. Now, well, let's, let's tell you what it is. Yeah, now, we're going to go upstream. We'll be working upstream. This is the Bok Sprat. Just up uh, over there is actually the confluence of the Rifle Sprat. We're at about 1,720 meters above sea level. 
Um, Dryers and nymphs are going to work. I don't see much coming up at the moment, so I'd say start with, start with nymphs, yeah. And w there's a gate over here, so we don't have to do any fences to get in. We'll walk under the bridge. And I think you should take the first shot, Marcus, and, and it'll be down here. Do you think it's worth trying sort of downstream, upstream with a sort of nymph here? Um, it's a bit shallow down there. Okay. Um, Whereas it gets better as you go up. Okay. Is it wadeable up here? Oh, yeah. uh, well, we're going to have to cross, but um, generally this lower stuff is deeper, so off the bank, but higher up wading, yes. So there are a lot of undercuts in the rocks underneath? Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, look, look, just look at those rocks. And the, around the corner where it comes in as well would be a hot spot. Will this be just rainbows only in here? Um, might be yellow fish, but at this time of the year, rainbows probably. Where, where am I fishing from? Yeah, uh, that, I think you can come down here somewhere and basically just get it into the current and drift it past. Yeah, I just don't want to cross yet because it might spook us a little bit. Okay. Um, you can roll cast that. Shit, where is this thing? Okay. Ah, another bush. Uh, you want to sink it? The fly should go down. Yeah, there it goes, yeah. Yeah, and no, no, it's high and it's sinking now. Yeah, I think if you can roll it up more that way so that it drifts down. Because if you have it, if you look here, you can see where the shadows are in the tree. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah, just... yeah. Okay, now up across your left shoulder. Pause. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Just so bring it up slowly, because the idea is you want to actually load the rod bricks oh. here and pause, punch. Yeah. Okay, see, so gently, but up there. The whole uh, the water on your line, that's why you bring it in smoothly, pause slightly, and because the line has past below you, you want to push it over your left shoulder. Otherwise, you could do it over your right shoulder. Okay. So bring your arm up. Yeah. Slowly, slowly. Now just there, pause. Now go. Now this is a very useful cast. Um, it doesn't always work uh, very well with nymph, but if you've got a dry fly on, what a pleasure. Yeah. So can you cast you backwards? It's well, exactly the same. I just cast in there and just release line out the back. So you can go under the bridge, you're not going to hit anything there, and then just under that tree over there. Ooh, uh, gentle wiggles you, um, do it uh, underarm. Yeah, I just want to show you. Um, okay, you've been over the fish a couple of times. Uh, we haven't got them. They're probably aware of us, uh, so I think let's move and try a bit further up. Okay. It looks right, let's cross. Let's cross. We'll cross here under the tree because it's shallow here and then go up. Current. I'm just standing here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, again. Uh, now let's come through here. Just go quietly and say, you see that rock? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, if you can come quietly here onto those rocks there, just pop it in the current. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, down here somewhere. Yeah. Are you happy with the tree behind you? No. Okay.
Perfect, that deserves a fish. Just watch your line tip and let the current take it. Same again, but throw a um, downstream mend because you're in an eddy here. Oof, gentle wiggles. Yes. You want me to go and net it? I'll come net, Nigel. No, oh, well done. Well done, Nigel. It's only about 10, 11 inches, but it's a fish. <laughs> okay. okay. Now let's get it out. Okay. Well hooked. Ooh, there we are. There so, goes. Sorry, that wasn't a very graceful Thank you, Tony. Yeah. release. Okay, it was a Zach, beadhead Zach. And uh, short cast, fairly deep, uh, probably about two meters of leader on it, and uh, took first time. Well mm. hooked and well done. Nice mm -hmm. start. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tony. Great. Oh, this is a better. Oh, and an acrobat. Oof, look at that fish in the light. Oh, Nigel, you're turning into a bit of a cormorant. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's behind you. <laughs> oh, damn it. There we go. Well done. Right. Thank you, Tony, again. <laughs> yeah, now see where all the moss is, this green stuff? Oh, yeah. Yes, down there. Put it on that point. Yes, if let it just drift, see what happens. Have a strike already? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, it counts. It's a fish. Want some help? Yeah, he's released himself already. Yeah. Little paw. You yeah. see the big marks. Okay. Um, I actually want to get Richard in on the... Oh, and where is it? Yeah, where it comes in, yeah. But... <laughs> 
and you want to sneak across and go under the trees there, where on the actual rifle. You see that big pool under the trees? Uh, beyond these rocks? Yes. So if we can just cross over here where it's shallower, go up, and you see that it's, it's, there's a big hole in there, and it's actually the rifle spread. Yeah, similar. Like and uh, you wanna, want me to put it on your back? This whole thing is good. That's the magnet that is causing all the crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me get that away. That away. Yeah. And there. And Um, you see, well, you can see where you where to go, okay. where the water's washing in, yeah, tree. yeah, under a tree, you'll probably Can get... Can stand near this rock here? Um, yes. It will give you an angle up there. Yeah, basically just into the flowing water and let it carry it. And you want to end up in the shadow against the opposite bank, yeah. So just throw it into the moving water. Can you see your line tip? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, yes, mend downstream. No, no, downstream. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, just to allow the um, thing to move more freely or get pulled by the current. Okay. No, try again. Oh, beautiful cast. Yes, correct. I can't believe you haven't picked up a fish here. Just let it carry on going. Men downstream so uh, How's it going here? Great, just had one. Okay, what on? Off a little uh, beadhead nymph, a little okay. brown one. Um, the most amazing thing was it had a, had a big chunk out of it, probably that size. Out of, out of, out its, of its back? Out of its back. Yeah. How it survived, I don't know, but it looked like it had been, obviously, uh, otter or something at the back. Probably otter, yeah. yeah. And uh, so how it's still living and wanting mm. to feed, I don't know. But uh, I put him back in. And oh, okay. He, he probably won't make it, but. Uh, well, well done he'll anyway. Make for a, yeah, no, because I saw him it. jumping from the distance. Yeah, and so he's obviously got a lot of life in him. Yeah. And it must have happened quite recently, I suppose. I mean, there was a big red, open wound. Wow. Amazing. This is a beautiful piece of water, though. Anything more here? Uh, I haven't had any yet, but. Uh, Yeah, this part of the country is absolutely brilliant. Um, there's so much river frontage that uh, you, you're spoiled for choice. It's a, one of these places that 350, 400 kilometers of river front, you just don't get. In, in, in other parts of the country, syndicates uh, have cut it out, and, uh, and we really have the opportunity here. We're just spoiled for choice, and um, people are friendly. Uh, waters are available, and really something, from my point of view, uh, the best Northeast Cape, best in the in the whole country. We've really had a tremendous time. Okay, go for it. Right, the other the other thing with the, this part of the world is there are an abundance of guides, very willing to help, um, fairly easy to get hold of, and some extremely experienced fishermen. Uh, really, you learn one hell of a lot from these people. And um, I, I personally feel that uh, I haven't fished for trout in any other part of this country or some parts o overseas that uh, really equal the thrill of coming here. 
The scenery in this area is absolutely magnificent. Southern Drakensberg, the true Southern Drakensberg, um, at their very best. Mountains up to th just over 3,000 meters. Uh, you're fishing sometimes at uh, two and a half, 2,700 meters. Uh, the variety is enormous. The scenery magnificent and uh, really, truly the greatest spot in this country, without any doubt. This is my third time of coming up here to Rhodes, and I never cease to be amazed at the variety of rivers and landscapes and the, the friendliness of the people and just the efforts they make to, to try and conserve the rivers and, and to do their best to keep South Africa the way it should be. We see many instances of uh, bad land management, but I'm sure people are working on that. And Tony, our guide, has sort of been really pointing out some of the salient points of this area and what the farmers and the challenges that they face. But from a fishing point of view, this is my third day today, and every day we've been to a different place, which is totally different. And the guides that they provide as well are really super. Oh, we were very lucky the last time we came, we happened to see the bearded vulture right up on uh, Nordia's neck. And what a privilege, I don't think there's many places in the country where you'll see that. It was actually hovering above us, twisting his neck backward and forward to say, what are they doing in my territory, you know? But we always, fishermen, I think, are generally trying to keep the areas pristine in which they intrude upon, because that's what we're doing, really. We're intruding upon nature, and we want our impact to be as little as possible and to leave it as we found it, maybe even a little bit better with a bit of luck. We always try and pick up pieces of paper or cigarette stompies, which is the worst thing. But, uh, yeah, it's a privilege to be. I'm from the Western Cape. And I go up into the mountains there to fish the whole sloot and places like that. But this takes a lot of beating, a lot of beating. Okay. My third day of the Wild Trout Association, 11th year of Fly Fishing Festival. Um, yeah, I've been guiding a couple today um, as the first female guide. And it's been really, really, really fantastic. As usual, um, You've got stunning, stunning water, stunning scenery, amazing people. Um, yeah, and it's just really, really good to be back in Rhodes for the 11th Wild Trout Association Festival. I've lived in Switzerland for the last eight years um, and fished quite a lot of water. Scotland, Austria, Sudtirol in Italy, uh, Slovenia recently. And yeah, the best place on earth to fish is Rhodes, definitely. You've got the bluest skies, you've got the best trees, you've got the biggest selection of birds that you can imagine, and you've got wild trout. I'm in Rhodes and this is a delightful spot in southern Africa. I've fished rivers in Scotland, New Zealand, I've fished um, all over the world and this is a pristine spot. I highly recommend that if you're looking for a great sense of adventure, beautiful scenery, fantastic rivers, fabulous people, come to South Africa, come to Rhodes. Great experience, you'll never look back and make fantastic memories. Thanks for watching and make sure you make those comments or questions below. Like if you haven't liked and share the video. See you next time.